Hey yo, what up? I recently made some videos focusing on Equipment 2.0 and how some tanks can perform uh, better with different equipment setup. I did a Turbo Tiger 1, a Turbo Tiger 2, and even a Turbo E50, all without vertical stabilizers. And I also made a video with a T20 uh, running IRM and improved aim. But today I'm going to let Overlord Prime explain to you the maths and logic to the decisions I made uh, based on feelings and a hunch. Now, Overlord Prime is an NA streamer. He was a uh, WGL pro player at one point and I clipped this off his stream to share with you guys. Uh, yes, if you're wondering if I have permission to use this clip, I do. Me and Overlord Prime are like tight. He give me his left nut if I if I say please, you know. Anyway, let's jump straight into it. There's a little mechanic that's a little interaction in the game that people don't know about. I actually never updated my document for this. I discovered it and I was too lazy to update it. But um, I'm about to drop a knowledge bomb on you, okay? And why I say I'm gonna replace improved rotation mechanism all the time uh, with improved aiming unit. It's because dispersion values on vehicles with two dispersion reducing pieces of equipment they weaken each other they're multiplicative they're not additive so you see here how it says 42.5 percent right you see how they add the two together 27.5 plus 15 percent they add the two values together so now it's like 42.5 that is not true it's actually multiplicative. So the value even says here, the total bonus is calculated multiplicative. It may vary from nominal values. They add nominally, but they're multiplied. So when you have like um, bond stabilizer, 27.5% less dispersion, right? And now you use that new value of like 82.5 and you use that on the bounty rotation mechanism, but you realize that if you're taking that 82.5% and multiplying it by that 15% now, it's even weaker because it's now effectively like uh, 11%, right? So you have a 27.5% bond stabilizer. You now have an 11% improved rotation mechanism, even though it says 15. And then you compare that to the improved aiming unit, soon to be bounty, which is going to be 9%. Which one gets applied first? It doesn't matter which order. It'll it'll just get applied at the same time. But that's the uh, logic. Because I'm going to keep the stabilizer, right? Um, you could do the math the other way around. You could say you're going to be using the bounty rotation mechanism, which makes this weaker by about... Like, it goes from like 27.5% down to like 22% or something like that. Right? So you start off with an uh, aiming circle that's 9% smaller? Yes. And the thing is... I'll... Uh, so the way gun handling works in this game is you have various components and after this I have to go open presents in my family. You have accuracy, right? Multiplied by bloom. It's actually like a bloom uh, coefficient, right? It's some value, right? And the way this looks is going to be this. It's going to be accuracy times the square root of one plus your bloom, um, which is gonna be your dispersion. Uh, squared right and this is going to go on uh, with all your bloom values but we're going to assume it doesn't so what you realize is there's two big things you can pull out of this equation for equipment that reduces dispersion values this is where vertical stabilizer goes this is minus 20 percent okay but here's something you notice it's inside this equation it gets square rooted so what ends up happening is that if you have almost no dispersion, right? If your dispersion's almost zero and you take 20% away from that, does that do anything, right? The, you guys can answer, this is not rhetorical. Does that do anything? If I have zero dispersion and I take 20% away from it, does my accuracy change at all? And it doesn't. So what you realize is vertical stabilizer and improved rotation mechanism, even though they decrease the penalties, if you don't have much penalties, it doesn't do anything. In fact, you get less efficiency when dispersion's lower. 
And this is where this comes back to what I said earlier about the EBR, the M48. Why I said when I was looking at my equipment tier list, I said you could take off vertical stabilizer. This is why. Those tanks have incredibly good dispersion values. So you, when you take off 20% off of them, if it's not that high, you don't get the full 20%. You maybe get like 15% off your V stab, right? So you're better off using like improved rotation mechanism to add agility or using and specializing in other areas. Whereas if you take off accuracy, uh, like 5%, it doesn't matter what bloom you have, right? I could have infinite bloom and it doesn't matter because my accuracy is now, well, minus 5%. And this is what makes improved rotation mechanism not as good compared to a bounty improved aiming unit if it ever gets released because your decrease in accuracy effectively means a decrease in your final aim size. That's why. And as an example, uh, there are certain vehicles in the game that have very, very good dispersion values on certain aspects of it where they can't utilize all of vertical stabilizer. Uh, one of those tanks is actually going to be the mouse, right? And here, here's why. The mouse has very good turret bloom, but it never gets good turret rotation. It turret rotation is 17 degrees per second, about. It has very good turret bloom. So when you combine the two together and you actually do the calculations, the mouse turret can only utilize about 50% of a vertical stabilizer. So instead of hitting the 20% reduction in penalty, it only gets about 10% effective. This is, a, this is like an extreme example, but this is one of them. There's other vehicles where they're limited by their top speed. For example, an M48 Patton. Really good on the move dispersion values, right, for the hull. But it has a very limited top speed. There are other better examples. The M48 actually does utilize all 20% at top speeds. But if you are like sitting at like 20 or 30 kilometers an hour, it's not going to be that useful, right? Do you guys see this? Uh, let me know in chat if you guys see it. It's uh, my Google Docs that I made, my private one. I mean, you see, the, you see the link up there, but... I mean, maybe you can actually see it if you click, uh, type in the link, okay? So... This is, this is what I mean. We have dispersion redu reduction, right? We'll say this is V-stab. Right? And then we have the accuracy reduction, right? Which is going to be improved aiming unit. So, this is all the math, but basically what you want to see is this. These are dispersion values you get uh, when you finally do your calculations of squaring and adding. <gasps> but what you notice is at very low dispersion values, right? Look at the effectiveness of a vertical stabilizer, right? When you're barely moving your tank, when you're uh, barely doing anything at all, look at the dispersion. It goes from 0%, and when you start hitting like the values around 2 you then start getting some payoffs, right? And that's the thing. Um, it's possible to play in a way to limit dispersion penalties. Uh, an example, if you guys ever know, if you watch good streamers, what do they do when they're slowly poking around corners? Do you guys know? Uh, but if you guys don't know, if you have never noticed, is that they press R once. They press R once, cruise control at 5 kilometers an hour. And when you go at 5 kilometers an hour, you multiply that by your uh, dispersion value, which is like for most mediums or most heavies, like 0.2. So for most tanks, when you're pressing R once, if you're a heavy tank, you know, 0 0.20, dispersion, 0 0.20, 0 0.25 or something at 5 kilometers an hour, that's going to give you one dispersion, right? So a V stab would only be 50% effective, about 47% here. For a medium tank, for example, if you're going 5 kilometers an hour and you have a dispersion by like a, a 140 or STB at like 0.10, that's going to be 0.5 here. 18% effective. It falls off a cliff. So you can play a lot of high tier mediums if you know how to control your vehicle in terms of speed by utilizing this. By the same logic, you sometimes see me in the game control my turret speed manually, and this is why. If you control your turret speed manually, you can utilize this, right? A lot of tank destroyers, a lot of things, you know, you don't, you don't blast the dispersion up like crazy all the way down to like 15. 
And if you want to try, do this experiment if you want. Oops. Uh, play like a 4005 or play a tank with really bad um, gun dispersion. Slowly drag your turret around uh, for your first attempt. Trying to keep the dispersion under control. And then do another attempt where you just immediately snap to where you want to go. And you notice the dispersion jumps up in size to the point where you now have to re-aim in. But anyways, here's what I was talking about. Because of this, there is generally a point where improved aiming units beats um, like V-stab or improved rotation mechanism and you'll see like the chart on the right. It looks weird, but the green is improved aiming unit. That's gonna be your reticle size. The um, blue is your current reticle size. So you can see it's 5% smaller, but there's an interesting thing that happens. If we say hypothetically, we use a 9% improved aiming unit, right? And then we use a 10% improved rotation mechanism. Look at that. Do you see that? At low bloom, the improved rotation mechanism does nothing, right? But improved aiming unit helps. It decreases your reticle size all, all the way up until you get to about three dispersion value. And even after that, while improved rotation mechanism would beat it, it is only beaten by 1% when your bloom is like maxed out. So because of this, it's either you get 1% better dispersion reduction in very particular cases, uh, which is when you're moving around and driving around all the time, or would you rather get 9% accuracy reduction all the time and when you're sniping, right? So this is why I rate the accuracy reduction so high, and this is why I say bounty improved aiming unit is going to be meta changing. And when you take into account the fact that uh, V-stab and improved rotation mechanism multiply, right? You don't actually get 15% from bounty, you actually get 11%. So now look at that chart, right? You're not really being beaten that much. It's actually 10.8% by the way, but you can see that. So this is why I keep telling you guys in every stream, when bounty improved aiming unit comes in, it's, it's going to be slept on, but it's going to be a piece of equipment that I will tell everyone to use to the point where I will probably put it up in A list, like A tier when it comes to equipment level, right? I mean, that's basically the logic. If you're to use them one by one, then yeah, this chart's pretty accurate. But if you're using it with vertical stabilizer, this chart is pretty useful. Right, so, yeah, there, there you go. I mean, that's it. I mean, if you want to compare, like, just raw, like, 15% on bounty, you know, improved rotation me mechanism still wins handedly. But when you stack that with um, V-stab, again, it's not going to be 15%, right? Even with standard V-stab, it's going to be 12%, because 20% off of 15 is going to be 12. So it does win in some scenarios, but I feel like that... 9% accuracy is going to help you a lot more in those cases when you're sniping and you don't lose too much on the um, Dispersion on the move Was that was that high level theory crafting interesting to you guys? I Mean I know I know some people don't like it. They're like overlord just play some tanks All right, there you have it make America think again. I hope you enjoyed this video remember to save it so you can rewatch it uh, share it with your friends uh, if you want to you know be more efficient with your equipment and overall gameplay uh, it pays to have the science to to back up your skills you know anyway thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you on the next video bye, -bye.